This is the meeting of the Board of Chiropractic Examiners, Government and Public Affairs Committee. <clears throat> it is being held by teleconference pursuant to the statutory provisions of Government Code Section 11133. This, the date today is Friday, June 16, 2023, and the time is 1 p.m. The board's paramount responsibility is to protect the health, welfare, and the safety of the public through licensure, education, engagement, and enforcement in chiropractic care. Members of the public may address the committee during the public comment session. Public comments will be also taken on agenda items at the time the agenda item is heard and prior to the committee taking any action on said items. Those who would like to provide public comment will be limited to three minutes unless at the, unless at the direction of the committee. Circumstances require a longer, <clears throat> at the discretion of the committee, circumstances require a longer period. Member of the pub, members of the public will not be permitted to yield their allotted time to other members of the public to make comments. Individuals may appear before the committee to discuss items may <clears throat> not on today's agenda. However, the committee may not discuss or take action on these items, except to decide whether to place the matter on the agenda in a future meeting. Please be aware the meeting is being recorded. Please turn off or silence all cell phones. We will now take roll. Good Mr. afternoon, uh, Ms. Cruz. Present. And Mr. Sweet is present. All right. Thank you, quorum established. So I'd like to, I think the, we're gonna to move to agenda item number two to review uh, an impossible approval of the March 13, 2023 committee meeting minutes. Uh, I'd like to open this uh, agenda item for discussion. Are there any questions or comments or changes to the meeting minutes? I do not have any. Um, I will move to approve the March 13th, 2023 committee meeting minutes. Thank you. I second. Um, moderator, please open the, this item for public comment. Certainly. We've opened up this for public comment. If you'd like to make a comment, any attendee may click on the hand raise icon. There should be at the bottom of your computer screen or if you're on a mobile device behind the three dot other options or you may look for the question mark icon, type the word comment in that text box and click send. Each speaker will have, uh, let's see, three minutes with a 15 second warning. And you may speak only once per agenda item. Are there any comments on the minutes? I do not see any requests for comment. Shall I close the public comment feature? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Good. Let's call this to uh, let's vote on the motion. Mr. Sweet, please call the vote. Ms. Cruz? Yes. Mr. Sweet is yes. All right. Uh, move motion passes. Let's move on to agenda item number three. Update on board's administrative administration program, including budget and fund condition, business modernization, and implementation of Connect system and status of board's pending rulemaking packages. Um, Ms. Walker, uh, can you please uh, you can go ahead and start with your presentation? Sure, yes, thank you. Um, so I first wanted to start with personnel updates at the board. Um, we, recent, we recently hired Austin Maha as our administrative technician. He's um, handling our front desk and we're training him on our cashiering duties and just general office support. So we're really excited to have him on board. Um, and then we also recently promoted um, assistant executive officer, or Tammy Pitto to the assistant executive officer position. Um, Tammy's been with BCE for over 14 years and she's been a DCA for 18. So she's gonna be a great addition to our management team that we have and really helping support um, moving forward a lot of the, the program um, updates and regulations that are being, um, you know, going through the committees and then at the board level. So excited about those two updates. Um, we are continuing our recruitment process um, for, for a few more positions. We're, we're targeting enforcement right now. So we've got some applications that have been submitted for an analyst position and a special investigator position. So we hope to conduct interviews in the coming weeks and get those filled. And then we're looking at the larger reorganization occurring um, this summer. Um, also on the topic of um, with administration, um, 
our legislation that we have that allows us to meet in this format that we're in right now, um, where we have um, remote teleconference with no um, physical locations identified in the meeting notice is going to be expiring at the end of the fiscal year. So come July 1, we need to um, work on, we need to revert to the traditional compliance with the Bagley-Keene Open Meeting Act. So efforts are currently underway right now to plan for our July 20th board meeting. Um, our plan is likely to, to host a hybrid meeting with a physical location at the DCA headquarters in Sacramento, and then also provide the option to all of the board members um, to either travel or participate remotely. The only difference with what we're currently doing is that any uh, members participating remotely will have to identify their meeting location in the um, agenda and they'll have to be present at that location for the entirety of the meeting. So we'll be communicating that to all the board members next week and getting those planning efforts underway. Um, also, as far as administration, um, there um, the program update included um, some legislation relating or uh, that the board had reviewed at the last meeting. Um, most notably, AB 765, which was um, the medical specialty title bill that there was um, significant concerns about. That one was actually held in appropriations committee. So it's dead for 2023, but we're still going to have the board discuss the bill, um, particularly if there's any amendments that may be needed um, in 2024 if that bill um, you know, is, is reactivated and is going to be moving forward. Um, another uh, Significant note uh, as far as the legislation has to relate to SB 372, which had to do with the um, the registrant records that are on DCA search and um, the changes that would have to be made if there was a name or gender change. Um, the bill has been uh, pretty completely reworked. Um, the Department of Consumer Affairs worked closely with the author's office on some amendments to the bill that really narrows the circumstances where um, that those we would have to remove enforcement records from DCA search. Um, so they, they kind of they tightly crafted that bill to really um, in circumstances of gender change or um, in domestic violence type situations, basically, you know, safety issues would be the circumstances where um, we would remove that information from DCA search. With those changes to the bill, um, it eliminated our fiscal um, impact that we had previously had, um, just given that the bill on itself um, it's pretty straightforward. It's narrowed the circumstances where we would need to apply it. And then it also, um, we're expecting that we would get just direct guidance um, from DCA on how to implement the bill. So um, a lot of changes with that bill. Um, it will be on um, the agenda for the July 20th meeting for a full discussion by the board. Then on the, um, there's a few other bills. Um, one of them that we recently added, um, or I added to my update was SB 447. Um, that bill largely doesn't relate to the board, except for there's one provision in the bill which would repeal the existing ban on state-funded travel and state-sponsored state travel um, to states with discriminatory laws on the books. Um, if this bill was to pass, it's by eliminating that travel restriction, we would be able to travel to any state. Currently, there's 23 states that we're prohibited from traveling to. So we're watching that bill and any impacts that might have on um, the board being able to participate particularly in events like the FCLB National Conference, because we currently can't, we couldn't participate this year because it was in Florida. And um, unless this bill passes, we can't participate in 2024 because it's planned for Arizona. So we're watching that one. And then we also have SB 544, um, which would be the, the bill that um, updates the Bagley-Keene Open Meeting Act in terms of teleconferencing. That bill is moving forward, but it doesn't have an urgency clause. So that's, that's where it puts us in the position of um, you know, come July 1, we need to comply with the regular Bagley-Keene Act, and then potentially come January 1st of 2024, um, we'll have some more flexibility on how we conduct remote meetings. Um, the other thing that staff has been particularly working closely on is proposed regulations, and we've been working closely with each of the committees um, to work to work on the different proposals and get them uh, moved up to the full board. Um, just recently on June 8th, the Enforcement Committee met and they discussed two proposals. Um, they discussed the, um, which one was it? They discussed um, the pro the, con the process for petitioning the board for reinstatement of a license. And they also discussed um, the circumstances for licensees reporting um, disciplinary actions and convictions to the board 
and the board's authority to discipline a licensee based on um, action by another public agency. So both of those proposals were approved by the enforcement committee um, and recommended for consideration by the board. So staff is going to be working on um, working with our regulatory council to finalize some language so we can have that for the board's consideration on July 20th. Um, of those 20 proposals that we currently have pending, which it's, it's pretty significant workload, um, we've got about seven of them that are now moved to the phase of where it's in staff's hands for us to put the regulatory proposals together and get them to the Office of Administrative Law which is very exciting. Um, and we have 13 more that are working through at the various committee levels. So I would say, you know, in the last fiscal year, we've made pretty significant progress on um, addressing the, um, the policy proposals and then moving them forward to the board um, to make some decisions. So pretty excited about that. Um, the other portion of my update has to do with the, um, the our implementation of the Connect system. Um, and our business modernization efforts. Um, as far as Connect, our last major software release was the one that occurred on February 28th. And then shortly after we had that software release, there was um, there was the need to take the system down for maintenance and that affected all the DCA boards that were on Connect. Um, after they went back online, um, for the most part, it's been stable. We're still troubleshooting a few issues here and there as we encounter them. Um, we are still finding, um, unfortunately, we're still finding circumstances where licensees um, can't renew their license online. They'll they'll go to click the button that's there and they end up getting an error message. So we're really trying to troubleshoot that with the vendor and eliminate it because we want to get that to 100% reliability um, before we begin really pushing all of our traffic to the website to have them renew online. So we're, we're narrowing it down. We're seeing less of an instance, but we are still seeing, um, we're still getting those calls and emails to the board about you know, a licensee that's having issues with the system. So we're working through that. Um, like I said, once that's complete, we plan to have that instructional resource page available on the website and then also put links within Connect. So if somebody's stuck along the way, they can visually see, you know, how to process a renewal. If they're still confused, we're here, staff's here to help, but try to give them something, um, some sort of instructions um, to help them through that process. We're also testing um, functionality that's going to allow military spouses and partners to apply for temporary licenses and satellite certificates. Um, that's in accordance with AB 107, which requires that we have that in effect July 1. So we're on target with that. We're just um, completing some final testing and then we're going to um, get that rolled out into the system. Also on the topic, though, of business modernization, um, recently DCA's had two major outages with our printing vendor. So it's not Connect, it's actually the other database that we use that prints our license renewals and then prints the licenses after they've been um, after they've been renewed. We've been having two ma pretty major outages. Um, DCA is working to rectify that issue, but the reason I bring it up is it really um, requires that um, not just BCE, but all of the programs start talking about the long-term need for printed renewal notices and licenses just because the system that generates the printing is kind of archaic so it's it's difficult to generate those um, and it's hard to find vendors that are willing to do that work so um, we'd be we're going to be discussing that issue in further detail with the licensing committee as part of their efforts um, and discussions about filing of practice addresses the renewal process and just what that modernization of licensing might look like but i just wanted to bring that up here as well that there's potentially a need for us to modernize kind of the way we um, we approach uh, the license renewal notices and then also um, the printing of licenses after after they've been renewed. As far as that, the only other update I have to share um, relates to the budget. Um, we're currently on track to revert about $700,000 back to our fund, meaning um, our total revenue received. We're on target to collect about $700,000 more than we spent in the fiscal year. Um, our our spending this past fiscal year has been very low, um, primarily due to savings from not only uh, personnel costs, but then also our attorney general costs have been much lower than our full budgeted amount. So it gives us that uh, that cushion in our fund. And really at this point, our plan is to uh, redirect $250,000 of that reversion um, to the bar loan that we have that's outstanding and so that we can make our first of six annual payments to that loan. We had been kind of, we had taken a wait and see approach throughout the fiscal year just to make sure that 
that reversion um, came to fruition and it has. So um, that's the plan there is that we can make that first payment this current fiscal year and then work with the budget office to establish um, an ongoing uh, payment schedule where we just make annual $250,000 payments until, until we're done. So I know it threw quite a bit of different things at you there with the administration update. Happy to answer questions on any of those topics or anything relating to administration. Uh, Mr. Sweet, do you have anything? I have my list. I want to make sure you get a chance. <laughs> uh, I'll go ahead and follow up after you. Go ahead. Okay. okay. All right. Um, so the couple things will start from at least order of the pages. So wanted to ask for the Connect system. In the last uh, last meeting's update, uh, there was a mention of the cashiering functionality kind of coming online late spring. Wanted to know kind of how that's going. And sorry if you touched on it. I I didn't hear the keyboards. Um, I did not. Thank you for bringing that one up. Um, that one is still unfortunately still in the same status. So it's it's okay. one that's been kind of a priority, but then they hadn't um, the developer that they were going to have work on it hadn't gotten to it. Um, the latest update I got was they were going to um, prioritize that. And we're we're hopeful that that's going to happen pretty soon because now that we have Austin on board, we want to train him on the new process, not exactly. have him spend his time learning the, the outdated one. Okay, perfect. All right. And is there kind of understanding at least uh, we are kind of getting to the end of Q, Q2, um, what's it called, or what's it called, your fiscal year Q4? I'm trying to get it right. Um, what's it called for next quarter? It, it, so you're anticipating it to be more of a priority on the on the developers list, at least within Q, uh, the next quarter. Correct. Yeah, because what yeah. they had to they had to shift the AB 107, the military oh, yeah temporary licensure, all the way to the top. Um, okay. That's going to be done at the end of the quarter. So yeah, we expect that to be one of the priorities heading into the next fiscal year, that first quarter. Okay. Perfect. Um, let's see here. Uh, you mentioned that, oh, I can't even read my handwriting. Uh, you, um, within Connect, you're going to start kind of to provide instructions. Are you referring to more help test, text within the system, hover text, or is it more of kind of the online tutorial stuff that you were going to get into in the communication plan? Combination of both, actually. Right. So we want to have within the system, um, just kind of like what you experience on other websites, where if you kind of hover over something, it okay. tells you in more detail what it is, but then also uh, resources on the website. So before you log in, if you wanted to peruse how you would, you know, complete a transaction, you could see that as well. Mm -hmm. And so the next thing here is, I'm happy to hear that we're going to continue the conversation kind of in the licensing committee about kind of options for um, what's it called, kind of the approach to the licenses <laughs> and kind of whether it be printing and modernizing. Because I know we had talked about that a couple of meetings ago. So happy to see that come back. Uh, for my notes here, uh, for um, the Beckley Keen Open Meeting Act, uh, you mentioned that um, kind of the board members will be uh, communicated to on um, Kind of the options to come in person or come uh, or kind of do it remotely but kind of similar to what we did before kind of give um sort of publicly announce um their location will where they'll be at the duration kind of what i asked is something that i think was a point of confusion at least for me um before was making sure that we were accessible to the public so kind of whatever that means or whatever that looks like just making sure that if there's that extra caveat of accessibility to the public during the meeting that kind of we i think that's where kind of i had trouble because i was in an office building and you know making sure if there was a requirement for that that we were complying to the, to it yeah and that that requirement would be in effect so um in addition to posting that in the notice it yeah thank you for noting that it the location has to be publicly accessible so mm -hmm. you, know, you can't take it from your car you wouldn't want to take it from your home yeah um that, those are other things to keep in mind um with mm -hmm. the remote locations yeah okay so i just want to make sure kind of I get in the communication that's going to be sent to the board members that that's included um let's see here um uh, enforcement committee. I think the last thing I have here in my notes is kind of um, first I want to say amazing job everyone with the amount of regulations <laughs> that we have in the works because this is this is this is not a little. It is it is definitely a lot, and I can definitely recognize all that goes into it. Um, I think what would help me, and then maybe this is just me being um, me, maybe in the way it's organized, if we can 
organize it by kind of what state it's in because I know a lot of them are coming up in the next meeting because I think when I look at it, what I'm looking for is um, what is my next actionable step that I have to do on this? Okay, I don't have to do anything because it's pending um, this particular committee or this is going to the enforcement committee or the licensing committee. So, okay, now I know that I'm on deck. So I'm not sure if there's a way to indicate that kind of or call it out just so that um, I think just kind of from a board member perspective, that'd be incredibly helpful. Sure, yeah, we can incorporate um, some sort of visual kind of effect, and then also we can reorganize the listing of them. They were kind of identified in order of um, how we were going to tackle them, but now that we've got so many in different phases, I think it makes sense to revisit how that how that list looks so it's a little easier to comprehend and um, follow. And then I think my kind of my last two comments is um, welcome to Austin. So <laughs> welcome to the team, Austin, and also a congratulations to Tammy. So kind of excited for kind of the next steps there. All right, I'll turn it over to Mr. Sweet. Yeah, yeah, I would echo those uh, comments as well. Um, and in in that regard, I, we we did note the the two positions that were filled. Um, and then you mentioned, I think there was you said there would be a larger revamp later this year. Did I hear that correctly? And if so, what what does that entail? Correct. So we have um, we've filled two positions. We have two RPAs or um, like personnel action packages that are currently open. We've advertised the positions. We've received apps. We our next step is we need to um, conduct interviews with the top candidates. That's for an enforcement analyst position and a special investigator position. What we have from that is um, after we get take care well concurrently, but as we're taking care of those actions, we're also in the midst of doing a more um, DC or a BCE wide reorganization where um, we we're going to be moving some positions around and updating duty statements um, and really trying to increase efficiency in enforcement by having them specialize in certain areas, whether it be investigations or case management. And then on the other side, um, we currently have one um, we have one uh, unit that's admin, licensing, and CE all kind of combined together. So really breaking that up a little bit and making sure that we have our designated admin positions to handle things like contracts, um, supporting the board, um, and then also um, like our so social media and our outreach that we'll be getting into, and then putting continuing education and licensing together um, just as a standalone unit. So kind of um, eliminating some of the overlaps in our positions and really designating people um, with, you know, more focused purposes. Okay, very good. Um, and is some of that pursuant to some of the um, strategic plan that we we discussed? Yes. Okay, gotcha. Um, and then as to the, um, you mentioned that there was um, a surplus of, I think you said 750,000 which was 250,000 of which was going to be paid to the loan. Is that that correct? Is that more than we anticipated in our, I believe that's more than we anticipated in the budget, correct? Correct. Yeah, um, we were originally anticipating to have a little bit less in terms of the reversion so far um, as we as we do the math each month, that number is growing. So we're currently hovering right around 700,000, which puts us in a good place to um, to Kind of redirect 250,000 of that and still have about 450 close to 500,000 that we can revert for um, for future purposes okay and um forgive me but remind me about how much what that loan balance is the loan balance itself is a little over it's about 1.45 million dollars so with interest um we're expecting it to be right around six payments of close to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars Okay. Okay. Well, I'm glad we're taking a little chunk out of it. Um, I think those are all my questions for now. I appreciate appreciate the feedback. Thank you. So, if there's no more uh, no additional questions, uh, I'd like to open this item up uh, to to public comment. Thank you. This is the moderator and we're opening up the WebEx Q&A. If anyone would like to make a comment, the easiest way is to raise your hand by clicking on the hand icon and that's in the bottom row if you're on your computer or behind the three dot other options if you're on a cell phone. 
And if you are a call-in user, you can press star three to raise your hand. The other way is to look for the question mark icon, type the word comment in that text box and click send. Each speaker will have three minutes with a 15 second warning. Any comments on the administrative report? I do not see any requests for comment. Shall I close the public comment feature? Yes, please. Thank you. All right, let's go ahead and uh, move on to the next uh, topic here since that one was information only update and discuss um, dis update and discussion on the status tracking and reporting of the 2022 to 2026 strategic plan objectives. So um, kind of handing the mic back over to you, Ms. Walker. Sure, thank you. Um, so the meeting materials include a written update um, on the status of our 19 um, objectives from the board's um, strategic plan. Um, the majority of, as far as um, the progression of each, um, unless you'd like me to run through each of them, I wasn't planning to, but um, as you can kind of see um, by reviewing the status of our objectives, the majority of our efforts um, have really been aligned with um, working through our regulations packages. So um, you see that in the progress um, in terms of, you know, moving the continuing education language forward. I think that was that was a big feat over the last fiscal year was really getting that proposal through the enforcement committee. Or, I'm sorry, the continuing education committee and to the board. Um, and our last step really there is to get the regulatory link or regulatory package complete and to legal so we can get to the Office of Administrative Law. Um, we've also gone through quite a bit of efforts um, in organizing that other pending regulatory workload so that we can um, really route it through at the committee level, have the discussions and bring things forward to the board. So I think we've established, um, you know, pretty good um, kind of throughput on regulations compared to where we were at um, a few years ago compared to now. Um, beyond um, the written update in the strategic plan, I'm going to ask... Um, I'm going to ask the moderator to share the um, the tracking tool that Solid provides with our strategic plan. Oh, you read my mind. This is one of my questions. <laughs> so, so really, for purposes of today's discussion, we wanted to discuss with the committee um, not only the status of strategic plans, but then get some feedback on um, what the frequency and types of tools that you would like to see in terms of getting these updates. Um, one improvement that we're working on coming into the next fiscal year is really establishing um, regular monthly reports to the board where we're issuing um, like some sort of written report, probably similar to kind of the format you see in the, um, the memos that go with the committee meetings. And then um, from there, you know, we can include um, anything related to the strategic plan that, you know, the committee thinks would be beneficial to see, or we could do quarterly updates. Um, so I want to get a feel for frequency and then kind of the detail that um, you might want to see in those types of updates. So um, what's being shared on the screen right now is the um, is the tool that's been developed by DCA's solid training and planning solutions. Um, and this first page here, this objective scorecard is kind of at a glance, um, the, prog the progression um, or you know percentage of completion for each of the strategic plan objectives. Looking at it, you can see that um, we're a little, we're about 20% complete on most of them. Um, and the most progress has been made in the goal area of laws and regulations. And then on our licensing side, if we could go to the action plan, the action plan is kind of the at a glance, um, where it gives you um, the status with color. So you can tell, um, whether something's been completed, if it's in progress, you know, in cases things aren't, haven't been started. They've got this tool available. They also have a Gantt chart um, in terms of time for what, you know, kind of what our start and end looks like. So wanted to share that as an update and then really just um, for purposes of today's meeting, just discuss with the committee um, kind of what, what you'd like to see in terms of updates coming from staff on these objectives. This was exactly the questions I was going to ask. I was like, can we see a Gantt chart view? Is there a way that no? So you um, got really excited there. <laughs> I'm going to be very honest. Um, I think at least uh, starting with the Gantt view, what, what I think similar to kind of how we have the percentage view, if we wanted to, um, well, I guess, 
So the, each of these is by each of the measures. I'm looking at, right, at like the 1.1 stage, whereas the one point, like that next level down of like the 1.1.1 um, level state. Actually, I'll, I'll, I'll pose the question to Mr. Sweet. Do you think that's too in the weeds? If I if we go down to that level of right, so we um, in looking at the table within our documents, we see right kind of in the table, you know, this kind of the next level of task complete, complete, and progress delayed. You know, whatever it may be. I'm, I like having this update in the for the meetings. I don't know that I need it um, more often than this though. Mm -hmm. If that's at that level. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, I think I'm good with it. I'm just, I'm trying to like level set. Like, no, I'm only supposed to get the high level version. I, I shouldn't go too far into the weeds. Um, I think this is great, to be honest. Um, refer, I, you've been on the board longer than I have, um, Mr. Sweet. Is there a kind of, is this, what's is it compared to what you've received before in the past, kind of how do you feel like this is going to be helpful for you? No, I mean, I, I liked it. I think it's it's uh, very clear. Um, I mean, even if I, even though I've been on slightly longer, I mean, I think um, as far as the the um, action plan goes for the st strategic plan goes, I think we you know we've both been involved in it for you know a similar amount of time, and I, I think this is a very helpful way to look at it. Um, I like charts and graphs, so um, probably even more so than the the layout in our in our packet. Um, mm -hmm. so that I, I like it this way. I agree. And can you, can you select on the action plan? Cause I, I feel like the, um, the action plan is really going to tell us kind of that next level of detail. So with the objective scorecard, I imagine that's telling us right relative, to, um, where we are overall, how close are we to a hundred? We're about, I want to say, I'm kind of looking at the year 2023. So we're about two and a half years left into our in accomplishing our strategic plans. This is how far we are. We have two and a half more years to go, right? When it comes to that, um, whereas the Gantt chart is just telling us kind of the spacing. And I imagine this is just my assumption that as things get delayed, as things um, not get delayed, but as things potentially um, kind of hit hit a bump, might require more time or ends early, right? I feel like what you're showing us right now is the kind of the, not the proposed, but the kind of the established plan in the Gantt chart, but also the, um, wasn't sure if you were going to show also the actuals. In terms of, in terms of the Gantt chart, I mean, we can show both and that's probably yeah. helpful overall if we're showing, you know, our, our goal and then where we're at, because like you said, you know, we put the action plan together with, you know, these are dates we think are reasonable. Let's let's see how we can do. There's certain yeah. ones that we complete early and there's some that, you know, may be delayed for one reason or another just a little bit. Um, I also, you know, looking at it, you know, looking at the different objectives, I mean, it's, or I'm sorry, the different, the different specific actions within each of the objectives, we can incorporate that as well into kind of a Gantt chart and make it visually appealing enough that it's not too busy, yeah. but it, you know, you could drill into the detail there because that, that could be helpful in terms of looking at, um, you know, you may have an objective where it's on hold because of one specific issue and maybe we can identify that um, just at a glance so that you can kind of see where yeah. that where we're held up. Um, I would say, you know, with some of them, when we're looking at reciprocity requirements, um, mm -hmm. we're making progress there, but one of the one of the tasks that we're taking on is really evaluating each state's requirements as it relates that to environmental health. scan is, is a yeah, lot. <laughs> environmental scan. That's it is a lot. And then um, the inconsistencies in um, just the verbiage is being used by the different states. So in addition to gathering the research, which is pretty straightforward, um, we're actually going to have a staff divide up and actually make contact with the states and make sure that we actually understand correctly the way it's written so that our report is accurate. And you know, that's going to add, you know, maybe an extra month of time just for us to make sure that we can mm -hmm. make that contact and make sure we understand it correctly before it mm -hmm. goes to the licensing committee for consideration on, you know, reciprocity requirements. So yeah, we can definitely, we definitely expand, we can use this and kind of work through different models. Mm -hmm. 
And, and one of the things that you, that you just mentioned and that I like in the, um, the one that's in our um, packet here is the status. And just like you said, if there's a holdup, what is that yeah. holdup? Just so that we kind of know um, why ha something hasn't started or if there's some sort of impediment to getting it done, what that is, which I like. Sure. Yeah. And so when this would be, um, so when kind of those reports would be shared out with the board members kind of on kind of the routine basis, um, I'm just wondering kind of <laughs> coordination wise, um, would it just be kind of email? Is it gonna be like in a secured um, kind of, I imagine a secured box um, similar to how we receive our materials? Yeah, so the plan is um, likely to use um, the box software, but we want to establish like a board member resource center where you have a link, but you can get to a box account and you can navigate all sorts of materials. Um, one of which would be, um, you know, if there's some a monthly report, you could have all the meeting materials for all the meetings in case you wanted to go back and look through different ones. Um, so incorporating different elements. Um, what we would likely do is send an email notification with a copy or a link to the report so that, you know, you don't have to constantly check to see if it's there, um, mm -hmm. but then put a centralized place so that everything's accessible in, in one area. And I think in general, in um, reviewing at least the, the the document that's in our packet in the for the things that are on hold a lot of them really were just you know due to kind of current staffing or kind of kind of filling of positions the environmental scans is there any other things kind of notable that we should kind of have our eyes on not at this point um i i really think we're in a good position overall with our strategic okay. plan objectives um anything that's looking like it's, you know, we're, we've are we got a couple instances where we're about a quarter behind on a few yeah. items, but at this point it's it's mostly due to staffing um, and we've kind of, we've really hit our capacity on some items of what we can really process through. Um, you know, promoting Tammy to AEO is definitely yeah. gonna help um, progress that forward as well as backfilling her position. So as we get more staff on board over the summer, um, we expect to be able to kind of catch up in those areas. So overall, no significant concerns with the strategic plan objectives. Okay. Do we plan on presenting this in next month's meeting? Kind of the the charts. Yes. Yeah, we're gonna um we'll incorporate the visual um update for the board um at the meeting. Mm -hmm. And so this is me. This is me being a little extra. So I wanted to um, bring up, so at least something, a suggestion just to consider, see if you can do, since you're doing it in Excel, I was like, Excel is at least universal enough that a lot of folks can can use and, and leverage, right? Not a lot of, not not a whole lot of barrier to entry there. Um, I think something to, to look at um, is maybe even adding a slicer in, because I imagine kind of there might be a preference to look at what are the things that are specifically related to this particular committee. Right, so I'm, I'm just thinking like, what is the level and ease of use, especially when it comes to that action items list, um, because it's it's a long list. Um, just adding, and when I say slicer, it's really a filter, um, so that when kind of for this, if if a certain, if you're looking for specifically in my case, the licensing committee or the governance committee, I can select those two, and then that's what appears. So it's um, just something I think would be in a, something some like I think a quick YouTube video and a <laughs> quick uh, kind of app applying it to the spreadsheet. So luckily it's Excel and uh, what's it called? There's lots of ways to slice and dice in that tool. Sounds good. Yeah, I appreciate the the recommendation. We'll we'll definitely put that in our um, in our tool because I think that would be beneficial not only to the board members but staff as well. Yeah, absolutely. And that's it for me on this topic. Any any other comments or questions, Mr. Sweet? Nothing from me. All right. Um, do we need uh, oh, a question? 
do we, so question actually to um, Ms. Stalker, do I need to kind of put this out for a motion or? Um... No, none of the, none of our okay. agenda items on today's agenda, they're just um, discussion items with the committee. We're not okay, expecting sure. action, um, but we do need to open them all for public comment. Perfect. Okay. Just want to make sure. All right. Let's go ahead and open this up for public comment. And this is the moderator and we've opened up the public comment feature in WebEx. If you'd like to make a comment on the strategic plan presentation, you can look for the hand icon at the bottom of your computer screen or behind the three dot other options and click that once. Or you can look for the question mark icon and click on that, type the word comment in the text box and click send. Each speaker will have three minutes to speak with a 15, 30 second warning. Any comments on the strategic plan update? I do not see any requests for comment. Shall I close the public comment feature? Yes, please. Thank you. All right. Let's kind of move on to uh, agenda item number five, review discussion and possible recommendation regarding 2022 to 2026 strategic plan objective 3.3 to create an outreach plan to improve communication with stakeholders, share helpful information, and clarify the board's role and duties. All right. Over to you, Ms. Walker. Thank you. Um, so yeah, as as you just mentioned, um, a lot of there's a really a whole section of our strategic plan that's um, dedicated to improving the board's outreach with um, various stakeholders. And um, the specific objective has to do with creating an outreach plan, but then it also expands from there and you know includes updating the website. So we've got a little bit of overlap in terms of the discussion today. Um, but really what we've been working on with this is really thinking hard about, um, you know, not only who are a group of stakeholders, um, which we've identified there in the meeting materials, um, it's, we have a lot, like, I mean, we have the general public and then specifically chiropractic patients. We've got our licensees and applicants. Um, we've got chiropractic colleges themselves and their students. We've got CE providers, we've got the associations, um, and then we've got other agencies, not only, you know, within the state, but then also um, all of our partners at the other states chiropractic boards. So what we wanted to do was really um, come up with a plan of like, how do we approach targeting all of these different groups, what makes sense and what's kind of doable within our existing resources that we have. Um, and we've kind of identified it there. Um, as far as with, with the public, um, the consumer section of our website needs to be updated. Like that's, um, we've looked at a lot of the other healing arts boards and we've kind of um, gotten a feel for the types of guidance that they have out there for consumers. And we want to um, develop the same so we can put that on our website. Um, they need to know things like, you know, what to expect at a visit. Um, how do I deal with, you know, insurance or billing type questions? Um, you know, letting them know about their rights to access their patient records, um, you know, by law, like these are the steps that you would have to follow. Um, you know, here's your rights as far as your records that, you know, they can't be held. If you have an unpaid bill, they have to still provide you the records, things to that effect. So what we want to do is update that section of the website with those types of resources that would be valuable, um, particularly to patients, but also the general public if they don't know much about chiropractic. And then we want to take um, like little tidbits from each of those uh, materials that we've developed and use that to develop social media content that's also would kind of direct to those larger resources and just provide kind of quick tips and things that we think would be helpful for consumers. Um, not only posts, but we've seen some of the boards are working with DCA's um, public affairs unit to develop um, like instructional videos. So we can, we want to definitely use different different types of media, but we really see the, the starting point there is getting the content itself up on the website. So that's what we're going to be focusing on. Um, same approach for our licensees. Um, looking at our website, the licensees section doesn't include a lot of resources for them. Um, it really needs to give them more information about, um, you know, not only, you know, transacting business with the board, but then also just, you know, related laws that they need to know, different agencies and how they interact with the board, just across, like, what, what does a licensee need to know to practice in compliance with the law in California? Not only BCE's laws, but then, you know, within other systems as well. So we want to develop that content. Um, we need to update frequently asked questions with, um, you know, the types of things that we're hearing from licensees so that we can use that as a guide. We want to take the same approach there where it's, you know, develop that web content and then use it to um, drive, you know, social media um, to kind of highlight it and then drive traffic back to the website. Um, as far as applicants, 
Um, we just want to give them a little bit more information as well on the website of, you know, what to know when they're applying, how can they prepare in advance, what is it, you know, how can we make um, that application process as smooth as possible if they, you know, if they have the checklist and the guide there and you follow all the steps, it should be a pretty seamless licensure experience. So we want to make sure that we have that information there. Um, with the other groups, um, we want to do um, a few different things. As far as students, um, you know, one one thought that had come to mind is, you know, as as they're heading back to campus for, um, you know, either starting the academic year or um, they're getting ready to graduate, is send them send notices to the colleges that can be distributed to the students with messages directly from BCE, either you know welcoming them welcoming them to chiropractic college or they're getting ready to graduate. Here's quick tips and things to know on how to how to get licensed smoothly in California if that's what they would like to do. And then um, Dr. Paris has done some presentations for students on the licensure process. So we'd like to, you know, kind of really enshrine that and continue that and try to work with being able to be present at the colleges to provide those types of presentations. As far as the chiropractic colleges themselves and also the, um, the professional associations and the CE providers, we want to start providing quarterly updates that are written of um, kind of what's what the board's working on um, so that they can get they kind of get the information straight from the source. We'd like to um, kind of align that with when the board meetings are occurring. So shortly after a board meeting, sending them an update of, you know, things the board had been working on, actions that were taken, and kind of what to potentially expect at the next board meeting, just to really open up that line of communication. And then from there, we also, um, looking at our other state agencies and chiropractic boards, um, really just establishing that rapport there. So reaching out to them and kind of you know, scheduling discussions, um, seeing where we have common ground and trying to trying to develop those relationships. Um, we've been working a little bit with the Department of Insurance and that's been really helpful because um, we've had some cases where, you know, they've referred complaints to us and then we've kind of, we've assisted them in their investigation. And it's like, we're kind of, we're really collaborating. So we want to really enhance more of that. We also want to work um, a lot more on information sharing with the other chiropractic boards because a lot of the states are experiencing the same things that we're experiencing. So just kind of making sure we have that communication. So. Really, that kind of that's what we had come up with as far as an outreach plan um, for our, all of our different stakeholder groups. Um, we really think, just given kind of the steps that are involved with that, we really think um, starting with the website, it's got to be the top priority as far as our outreach, but then kind of expanding out from there. So, I mean, for purposes of today's discussion, um, it's really a discussion with the committee and to get feedback. We don't um, we don't expect any. Um, motions or we don't we don't need any action other than just feedback and a discussion. Any immediate thoughts, uh, Mr. Sweet, or do you want me to kind of start off? Uh, well, I'll, I mean, I'll just start off by saying I, I, I do like um, this outreach plan uh, quite a bit. I think um, it can benefit the industry as a whole. So um, I commend you guys for that. Um, I did have a couple of questions. I mean, I guess the first one is, uh, and I think we talked about this with the strategic plan, is is there a current um, social media presence? Um, we have we have the accounts as far as the present, there's a presence, but there's not a very high level of engagement or usage. So that's where we have to significantly bump it up and kind of the way we think we have to get there is, develop plenty of content and really evergreen content that we can schedule regularly so we can post and hopefully drive up engagement with our page and um, and really get get that feedback. So we have we have the accounts, but they're not they're not very active at this point. And, and who would be the person tasked with uh, working on that? The primary um, person that would be working on it is actually when we do the redirect, um, taking a staff services analyst position from licensing and making them an admin analyst position. Um, and then it's also going to be overseen by uh, management above that. And then as far as coming up with the posts, we would work um, with the full staff to come up with good content. But we've put together some procedures on use of the social media account. And then we would have an analyst that's um, part of their duties would be monitoring the account, responding, you know, placing the posts and things to that effect. This is Sabina, if I could interject here really quick. Um, I would suggest taking a look at BBS and BBC's Facebook page. Um, they, BBS um, uh, and then BBC kind of modeled after BBS, uh, Behavioral Sciences and Barbering and Cosmetology. 
they're, they do great Facebook stuff. Um, they do like BBS was doing Facebook Fridays and there would be a topic and they would have the analysts there live to answer questions. Um, they would, um, anyway, they have a, a nice uh, pattern and routine of what they post. So it's, it's nice to take a look at how they, other places, other boards might do it too. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a, that's a helpful tip. If there's other boards that are handling social media well, um, you know, we can definitely take tips from them. Thank you, Sabina. Um, the other question I had, we talked about um, creating and disseminating a quarterly update to continuing education providers. And I was curious about how, uh, what the thought was as far as disseminating, how that would be disseminated. What does that, what does that look like? Um, very likely would be an email update to all of the providers with um, some helpful information about what the board um, is currently working on um, and just, you know, actions that have been taken. And then generally it comes from the frame that, you know, they're, um, they're conducting the seminars, they've got licensees in attendance. So it's giving them updates that they can also incorporate as, as relevant into their content of their course. Very good. And, and I will, I do completely agree that having a, a an up-to-date website that, you know, is easy for uh, licensees to use, licensees and, you know, other people to, to access is, uh, should be the number one priority. And I think we'll, we'll go a long way as well. So we can always down the road, refer people to that and make knowing that there's information that's easy to find there. So thank you for working on that. Thanks, Mr. Sweet. Uh, some things I have on my list. Um, one thing that really caught my eye was the listening sessions. So I, I kind of kind of love the idea of it. I think it's really going to come down to kind of approaching facilitation, but I think that's kind of just really a great opportunity to get direct feedback in general of how folks want to be um, engaged with. So I, I did notice I, that was in the plan. Um, something that comes to mind when we were developing the strategic plan, um, there were I think a portion of the discussion was around the different measures associated with the different objectives. So I imagine, and I, get, I, I remember kind of really, really getting into that topic um, at the time, um, I believe last fall, last summer, that time frame, and wanted to know kind of the types of analytics or the types of kind of measurement you're going to be looking at um, in terms of in monitoring some examples that come to mind, like top searches, the level of reach in terms of you know, how many views you're getting, if you're sending out an email, how many folks open that email, um, and even kind of getting into measuring the user experience. And I'm not sure if this is something that the communicate, I'm not uh, kind of the internal, when I used to work at CalPERS, it was our public affairs department. So if there's kind of that internal DCA public affairs department that may kind of be able to assist with that in understanding kind of the user experience measurements of people tend to click here a lot more or people tend to go here and have to backtrack a lot more. So I'm not sure if kind of that's available to you, but I know it was, I remember bringing it up during the strategic um, plan development, wanting to know kind of if kind of if that's more of in the next phase and this is more of the kind of looking at how are we going to approach each audience and then that's kind of the next phase of okay if we're going to approach them this way this is how we'll measure it wanted to know kind of where that's at sure um so we've we've gathered metrics on our use on the use of the website so we've got some pretty detailed metrics of um, where folks are going and where they're trying to get um the approach and then as far as um, metrics um we have um you know, with the social media posts, we can see metrics as far as audience, and, um, you know, how many how many people viewed and what that reach of certain posts was. Um, as far as the website itself, um, it really does need kind of a thorough restructuring. And it's it's pretty apparent um, to staff even just with using it. And then we do have the Office of Public Affairs that can assist with that as well. Okay. Um, I would say of all the things that you mentioned, I think the external um, we don't really have a method of surveying like external users, I would say at this point, other than just asking them to provide us with feedback. Yeah. But I think um, I think there's the skill in house at DCA to really assist with developing something that's smooth. Um, when I think of like websites, it's like 
making it to where um, if you're trying to get to content, you can get it, you can get there a number of different ways, making sure you have breadcrumbs at the top so people can work their way around. You know, if you landed from Google onto a specific page and you want to work backwards. So we're kind of taking that approach. Um, initially, it's probably getting the content just on the website with a dedicated web page, and then from there, um, rearranging things so that it's easy to navigate. Uh, this is Sabina, if I could chime in one more time. I'm so sorry. Uh, Ms. Cruz, you mentioned something that I wanted to let you know about another board doing. You mentioned listening sessions. Uh -huh. And um, if you want to check out a way, uh, any, of course, the board staff or whomever wants to check out how another board does them, there'll be one on the 19th for the Board of Barbering and Cosmetology. They're holding a, what they're calling a virtual town hall. So if you want to um, check that out or if staff wants to check out how other boards do it, um, you can find the link and information on the board's uh, Facebook um, and probably their website, but I know on their Facebook for sure, but they are holding uh, this type of town hall calling with your questions, you know, that type of thing. So um, I know that you mentioned listening sessions. So um, if anybody wants to check out how another board might do it, but 10 in the morning on the 19th. Thanks, Sabina. Um, I think another question, I'm going to kind of circle back to something um, Mr. Sweet had brought up kind of in and around staffing. You mentioned that um, kind of there's consideration right now to reclassify a position um, and then that there, it would be under a manager position. Would that manager be net new or would that be an existing position? The plan is to redirect an existing position um, into an admin analyst position. We've got um, we've got adequate staffing and licensing to be able to handle the workload. Um, so mm -hmm. the the idea is to um, you know redirect some of that licensing workload to existing licensing staff positions, freeing up that capacity to then move that person to admin so that they can focus on on things like outreach, um, mm -hmm. monitoring you know the general communication channels we have, and then also um, providing support in the areas of contracts and um, board business and other admin type activities. Would the manager with the kind of supervising role position above that position be a net new or an existing position? Um, it'd be a, it's still an existing position. Okay. So we're not gonna we're not gonna change our, our position counts. We're just gonna move some people around. Perfect. Thank you. That's really that's kind of what I was getting at in terms of is the count going up or is it kind of movement of existing? Um, and wanted to also know, especially as like this is a it's a large plan and it's definitely um, not a, a part time gig when it comes to all the things listed in the outreach plan. I imagine kind of this is a great opportunity for internal staff development as well, kind of to get involved in kind of the development of an engagement in this or kind of is that kind of how you're seeing it? Yes, um, or really seeing more just a, the function in a very specific area. Um, no, we we really look at looking at that outreach plan and especially the development of different materials. That's really um, that's really an office wide effort um, using the you know, specialists in their certain areas to really help develop content and then um, get that posted on there. And then as far as um, you know, things like listening sessions, um, we've done some small ones. We're definitely going to have staff. So thank you, Sabina. We'll have some staff check out that Barber Cosmo Town Hall because we've done them on a, a small scale and we find it to be really valuable because we just we put together you know, the avenue for, you know, expressing concerns or comments, things we're doing well, things we could improve on, and just, just taking the information in, you know, very neutral, um, just hearing what people have to say. We've we've done a few with different groups. Um, overall, they've been really invaluable for, especially staff, as we kind of navigate different issues, just hearing directly, um, you know, from our stakeholders. So, yeah, I mean, all of these, when it comes to outreach, although we're going to have one position that's really um, in charge of monitoring, making the posts and things like that. It's really going to require engagement with all of the staff. Perfect. And, and the reason I ask is that it's like it's like I think we're with the whole strategic plan in general, specifically this outreach plan. It, it, it's an undertaking. <laughs> and so I want to make sure kind of of uh, with all of the different kind of um, with the areas of direction the board's providing that we're kind of mindful is can we absorb this in house? And what does it mean for us kind of fiscally being, being fiscally responsible? So thank you. For, for that. Um, any, I think that's all the questions I have. Any questions for um, for you, Mr. Sweet, or anyone else on the call? Nothing further from me. Uh, let's go ahead and bring Seth to public comment. 
And this is the moderator, and we have opened up the public comment for feature of WebEx. If you'd like to make a comment on the uh, strategic plan outreach, you can look for the hand raise icon at the bottom of your WebEx screen, or you can look for the question mark icon, click that, type the word comment, and click send. Each speaker will have three minutes. Any comments on the outreach? I do not see any requests for comment. Shall I close the public comment feature? Yes, please. Thank you. All right. Let's move forward on to agenda item number six, review discussion and possible recommendation regarding 2022 to 2026 strategic plan objective 5.4 to redesign the board member ongoing procedures and orientation process. So I will hand the mic over to Ms. Walker. Thank you. I'm just going to provide a little bit of background um, on this one. Um, so as the committee's aware, um, that strategic plan also contains an objective to redesign the board member onboarding procedures and orientation process. Um, the committee's now discussed this twice. Um, we began in October of 2022, where the committee had discussed various improvements to our onboarding process. Um, and then following that at the meeting in December, um, the committee uh, reviewed what that plan would look like as far as what our onboarding and orientation process would look like for our new board members. Um, as well as with timeframes for when those actions would occur. Um, and that's in attachment one is just provided for informational of just what, where we were at with that. We, um, we've identified, you know, the actions that we're going to take from first, that very first appointment, um, you know, shipping the welcome package and really helping welcome the person on board. And then, um, you know, the, the use of the initial meet and greet session with the new member um, and the board chair and the liaison so that really just get introductions out of the way, find out um, you know, that member's interest, things that um, they might potentially may be a good fit for committee assignments, and then also identifying someone to act as a mentor for that new board member. Um, and by separating out that meet and greet session from the formal orientation, we really think is going to improve just the overall experience because in a lot of ways, the orientation sessions weren't very consistent and a lot of times kind of served as that meet and greet. So. We'd like to you know, welcome them on board, take care of that session right away, and then have a more structured, a little bit formal orientation session um, to really you know, get them familiar with the board and uh, the board processes, and then also you know, how it works in the environment of DCA and everything to that effect. So um, what we have in attachment two is um, really an outline of what that uh, proposed orientation session would look like. Um, beginning with you know, an overview of the board and the chiropractic profession, um, and we would really custom tailor this to basically what we learned from the member during the meet and greet session. So if we have a member that's, you know, well-versed BCE, maybe it's a licensee member that's actively engaged in, um, you know, other policy issues or they've worked for the association for years, they're familiar with the issues, tailor that to, you know, something that fits where we've, you know, give it more of a brief overview. But then if we have a member that's you know, brand new, doesn't know too much about chiropractic, we could supplement it with additional materials to really make them feel comfortable that they're up to speed, they understand the board and the issues that the board's been working on. Um, and then just overall, like the regulatory, the regulation of chiropractic in California, because that's, it's unique with it being an initiative act. So I think it's important to have that education included. Um, we'd also identify um, who the other board members are, um, key staff that they need to know, who to, who to contact with what, um, and then also um, the different policy committees that we have and their different workloads so that you just really feel like you're up to speed on um, what what everyone's working on so that when you get to the board meetings, you you feel like you've got that background knowledge. You're not kind of thrown in there, not quite sure of, um, you know, the purpose or what what's being worked on. Um, give them a little bit of background on how uh, committee meetings and board meetings work and also um, really give them some information on the different stakeholder groups and other agencies and kind of how they relate to the board. Like, how is the Department of Insurance and the Chiropractic Board, how do they relate? You know, do you share cases together, things like that? So we wanna really give them that whole landscape and background. We also wanna take a similar approach with DCA, um, really understanding DCA's role in this, and the various services, which there's so many that they provide to the board. Um, and then also give them an introduction to the other DCA healing arts boards, basically who regulates what, um, so that you kind of you see where BCE fits in in the mix there. Um, we've also got uh, the introduction to the Bagley Keene Open Meeting Act. 
um, really focusing on the requirements for public meetings, communications between the board members, and then communications that are received from other parties. Like if somebody's um, somebody's the subject of a disciplinary action and they reach out to the new member, what do they do? Really just giving them that information and being able to answer questions. Then we've got overviews of um, the enforcement process and discipline. We want to really educate them on the entire process, how the board receives complaints, who we receive complaints from, how do we investigate, um, how do we close cases versus decide um, to proceed and forward something for disciplinary action, and then educating the member on really what their role is in that process of you know, making decisions and um, how the mail votes work. You know, when, if you have questions, when do you reach out? Who do you contact? You know, when when's it appropriate to hold something for discussion in closed session? Things like that. And then also really understanding uh, the disciplinary guidelines and how those can be used as a tool when you're reviewing and evaluating cases. Um, just really giving them all that enforcement knowledge. And then also giving them an overview of um, like the licensing, continuing education, and admin um, functions of the board. So just so that kind of at a glance, they've, they've got the background, they know about DCA, and they know what we do internally at staff. So that's what we've, we've kind of got there. We wanted, um, again, a discussion item um, from the committee, if there's anything, um, any thoughts on that plan, if there's anything else that you would like to see potentially included in that, um, in that orientation session with the new member. Mr. Sweet, any comments? Um, nothing really. I mean, I, I like the plan. I think it's great. I like that there's, um, there are timelines in place or um, at least recommended timelines as far as getting this stuff done. Um, so um, I think it looks great, but I'll, I'll defer to you, uh, Ms. Cruz. Thank you. Um, I do have one, I, I understand kind of the focus for today was more of attachment two, but I wanted to kind of look at attachment one real quick before I give comments on, on, on the uh, orientation session. One thing I um, was looking for was also um, similar to how you have uh, kind of the meeting uh, before the members first mail vote, before the members first board meeting, similar um, before the members first committee meeting as well, right? So just kind of that chance to check in for that respective committee um, committee chair. Um, so that was kind of there uh, for the um, for the specifically the orientation. Um, Wanted to know, I'm not sure if other boards do this, but is there kind of any opportunity to give um, almost a, I don't call it a cheat sheet, but almost a cheat sheet on Robert's rules? Um, because that's, <laughs> it's just sweet. No, um, I, I actually wrote that sure. down. I was just going to say, I don't like, you know, I, I fortunately had prior board experience, but not everybody does. And so mm -hmm. I think that would be really helpful. Yeah. Um, Right, it, even kind of me kind of looking at my own cheat sheet of like, okay, this is where I asked for the motion. This is where I asked for, <laughs> right, this is now, this is where I go to public comment. Um, just really kind of kind of walking into uh, to these roles to Mr. Sweet's point of not having that prior experience, but maybe um, experiencing it, but not having to kind of really fully participate and engage in it. Um, two totally different experiences. So I think something around that would be extremely helpful, especially for a new board member. Um, uh, thoughts for the enforcement process and disciplinary procedures. Um, so I'm thinking of the kind of, um, I'm trying to read my notes, I'm sorry. I put a note of process maps not sure if kind of there's not I know a presentation was provided to us right of kind of what is that enforcement process um wasn't sure if there was an opportunity to do a, a very very high level even process flow of like this is what happens and this is where you fit in in the overall process right because a lot of things happen behind the scenes that we don't see and there are very specific points I want to say in both the kind of regulatory governance as well as the enforcement process where this is where the board members come in. This is where the board members can provide comment, right? Or if someone does provide, uh, how do I say this? Um, say for example, if there's a mail vote and someone wants to provide kind of a policy comment or um, an enforcement comment, right? Does that take us down a different path, 
So I wasn't sure if kind of there was an opportunity kind of to help provide kind of a high level process map of those types of situations, just so we know like like a mall map. You live here, you are here. And so and we can navigate ourselves through kind of what all of you are very, very incredible SMEs on, but um, what's it called? Uh, kind of is our life only oh, a couple times a month. Uh, yes, of, of course. Yeah, we, we definitely want to incorporate um, process maps and then also, um, you know, clearly defining the different terms and, but keeping it simple enough that, you know, it's, yeah. it's like you said, it's something you work on a few days a month. It's not something that, um, you know, simplifying it to where it's accessible information, but not information overload, but really um, we want to incorporate um, the process and how things move along, but then also the different options that are available, um, particularly, um, you know, when you're making disciplinary decisions, what the options, you know, how do you interact with the disciplinary guidelines? It gives you a menu of options um, that you can incorporate. And what does that look like if the board wants to change a decision? So we can definitely develop um, materials in that area. And also, um, oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, and I was, I was gonna say the, uh, the different types of pleadings, because we haven't, we haven't used them yeah. as frequently. You know, everyone's familiar with the accusation or charging document and we say you've done something wrong and we're going to initiate discipline. Um, but we also do things like um, we get temporary practice restrictions either through criminal court or we petition through um, directly through OAH and what that looks like. And then eventually when it makes its way to the board as a formal a final decision. So we want to really, um, really enhance the materials that we're giving specific to enforcement. And then you also mentioned, you know, with mail votes. Um, you know, what is a policy question versus when do I hold something for discussion? Really making exactly. that clear, not only on the ballot, but also in the materials so people understand um, really how to interact in that process. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you. Um, and yeah, I was I was literally imagining in the process map, just like a whole a whole box that just points to ask Sabina, just just ask her. So, um, because sometimes it really is going to come on, come down to the, I was like, the caveat and nuance of the interpretation of a regulation. So um, let's see here. And then one last thing that I noticed here, what I was looking for and I couldn't find it, maybe I'm just, I kind of did not, couldn't find it was really around, because I know we covered the different committees when it comes to, it covers enforcement and disciplinary, licensing, continuing education. I was kind of looking for also the governance, uh, our governance role when it comes to the regulations and uh, proposed bills. It may be covered here. I just I wasn't sure sure where specifically. Um, it would fall under that first section of the overview of the board. It's not okay. specifically called out there, but we could definitely oh, add a bullet. Weird. Yeah, that it's um, really okay. clear that that's we kind of put proposals and current projects, but that really can be expanded to be legislation and regulations as well. But that yeah. that would be covered in kind of the um, just the uh, broad level overview of what the board does and its function. Got it, because because it, for me it's similar where right with the, between the enforcement and license right between the other kind of kind of process maps that um, kind of we we talked about. I I feel like sometimes we get turned around with wait where is this what like similar to how I asked earlier if we can kind of organize um, kind of the pending legislation into kind of what is the next step status or what is the status or what is the intended next steps for this one um, so we can anticipate the next steps. Similarly, um, I'm not asking for the whole, you know, when a bill becomes a law um, kind of map, but really, right, just it's a something to tell us, um, high, again, high level, you are here, right, for us to be able to navigate that. And it may not be kind of maybe in the orientation, but even something to consider for the manual, so. Sure, yeah, we'll definitely incorporate that. All right, and that is, that is all my comments. Any other comments from Mr. Sweet or anyone else on the call? Nothing from me. All right. Let's go ahead and bring this out for public comment. And this is the moderator and we've opened up the uh, Q&A feature for public comment. If anyone would like to make a comment on the topics, you can look for the raise hand icon, which is the outline of a hand at the bottom of your computer screen or behind the three dot other options if you're on a mobile device. Or you can look for the question mark icon, click that, type the word comment in the text box and click send. Each speaker will have uh, three minutes to speak. Any input on the board orientation process? Mm -hmm.
And I do not see any requests for comment. Shall I close public comment? Please. Thank you. All right. Uh, moving on to agenda item number seven, public comment for items not on the agenda. And so in this portion, uh, we want to kind of let members of the public know that they may address the committee at this time, advise the committee that identifying themselves is, or I'm sorry, letting you know that identifying yourselves is completely voluntary um, and your name will be recorded in the official minutes if you provide it. Um, so moderator, please open up for public comment. Absolutely. So we've opened the public comment feature for any discussion of any items that did not appear on the agenda. If Again, if you'd like to make a comment, you can look for the raise hand icon or you can look for the question mark icon, type the word comment in that text box and click send. And I do not see any requests for public comment. Shall I close that feature? Yes, please. Thank you. All right. Agenda item number uh, eight, future agenda items. Uh, I'd like to open this up for discussion by the committee. Mr. Sweet, do you have anything on your list for future agenda items? I do not. Um, I should have flagged mine <laughs> along the way. Um, let me see here. Um, no, nothing really specifically stands out to me, um, so I do not either. Um, so let's go ahead and open up this, this up for public comment. And we've opened, reopened the Q&A feature for public comment. If you would like to make a suggestion of a discussion item for a future agenda, you can look for the raise hand icon at the bottom of your computer screen or the question mark icon. After you click that, type comment into the text box and click send. Each speaker will have three minutes to suggest topics. And I do not see any requests to comment. Shall I close that public comment option? Yes, please. Thank you. All right, so we're down to agenda item number nine, which is adjournment. So thank you everyone for a very productive, informative call. And I adjourn this meeting at 2.17. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank